Hello Makers. So some of you may have seen the Octolapse uh, video captures of me printing on this printer before. Uh, I've mentioned in a couple of other videos I use a Raspberry Pi in order to control uh, the printer remotely. So in this video I'm going to go over the setting up of a Raspberry Pi. As it happens after a unexpected power failure it crashed the operating system on this Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately it is a risk that can happen so I'm going to go over this one setting it up. So the first thing we need is an SD card. They recommend a minimum 16 gig SD card. I'm running with a 32 gig SD card. So before we do anything else, the first thing we need to do is format it. For that I use the SD Associates SD Formatter program because the Windows one just doesn't do it right. Once it's formatted, I then open the LANA etcher and there'll be a link in the description where to download that one from. And that will copy the image that you can download from the Octopi site, which I'll also link in the description, and copy it onto the SD card. Now that does take some time, so I'm going to time lapse that one for you. Okay, before we put this SD card into our Raspberry Pi, because I don't have a physical network over where my printers are, I'm going to be using the Wi-Fi network. And to use that, we need to set it up first. So that means editing this file. Don't use WordPad or MS Word or any of those sorts of things. Notepad or Notepad++ if you have it are the best ways to go about it. Now, and we want to change our SSID here. This is the name of your uh, Wi-Fi network. If you're using a wired network, you don't need to worry about this. Enter your password and then save the file. Once you've closed that, uh, eject the uh, SD card using the, soft the software ejection and then you can pull it out of your programmer. Next step is to put it into the Raspberry Pi. Once that's been flashed onto your SD card, you have your SD card and we simply insert that into our Raspberry Pi. Now I've printed a case that mounts onto the uh, 2040 extrusion and that works quite well for me. So you insert that and then this actually runs to a a USB charger, it's not the best solution, in fact it's a bad solution. If you can get a proper Raspberry Pi power supply that would be far better. I've been using the same unit to drive the one on my Cocoon Create for some time and never had an issue with it. But this one, this is the second time it's crashed on me. 
So we'll plug it in and power it up. Assuming I plugged in the cord the right way around. So we have a red light on it. A flashing red light is never a good sign on these things. If you get a flashing red light, it means you either have a bad cable supplying power to it or a bad charger power supply. So this one's flashed a couple of times. It usually occurs when it's writing to the SD card and that indicates that I'm just not getting enough voltage to it. Strangely enough, the one on my Cocoon Create uh, which has not had that problem. That's it here and you can see a nice steady red light. This one here, we're getting the occasional flicks. And if it happens to do that around the same time as we're also having power issues, there's a very good chance of uh, an SD corruption. You may note that I've got this unplugged from the printer at the moment. It makes it easier to power cycle the Raspberry Pi if it's not getting backfed from the controller on the CR10S5. Now the first thing this thing, the Raspberry Pi is going to do is set up OctoPrint. So it will expand the operating system out onto the rest of the SD card. Uh, it will then install the various drivers Okay, now that we've got the OctoPi loaded into the Raspberry Pi and it's mounted on the uh, print bed, it's powered up and we've been able to connect to it through the web interface. Okay, when we first connect to the web interface, it's going to want us to set it up. So let's uh, go through and work through the setup. Now, access control is something you definitely want to do. Um, even if you don't intend on accessing it from the internet, it always pays to have the access control on there. It stops accidental um, problems with other people connecting to it, should someone manage to get into your network. But if you do decide that you have a critical print running and you do have to leave, uh, keeping in mind it's not recommended to leave a printer running and not be attending it, you can still access it over the net and shut it down if need be. <coughs> so I always keep access control on. Anonymous tracking, that allows um, uh, the OctoPi developers, particularly Gina, uh, work out who's using what features and how it's working. And that allows her to concentrate on the more popular features that are in use on OctoPi. In this case, I'm not going to bother. Right, for those who don't know, 8.8.8.8 is Google's DNS server. This configuration works quite well you can see it is reachable I enable the connectivity check it's handy for getting uh, updates and notifications notifications of when new plugins have been released and the like I also enable the plugin blacklist processing um, OctoPrint was originally developed to run on any computer. Uh, it runs well on the Raspberry Pi and it's the most common version to be run nowadays. But there's nothing stopping people from developing plugins that only work on full size computers. So they can be listed on a blacklist for the Raspberry Pi. So if you, it will actually stop it from being listed. Uh, if it's blacklisted, if you enable this feature, when it's not going to work on the Raspberry Pi. I'm not saying that the plugins are bad, they're just not designed for them. <coughs> the 
Okay, so my printer is CR10S5. It's rectangular, origins lower left, it hasn't got a heated bed, it doesn't have the heated chamber. It is a 500 by 500 and by 500 printer. I don't have a custom bounding box. Those figures are actually pretty good, although I can get faster out of it. It is possible with the CR10S to get up to 9,000 millimeters a minute. Uh, the Z-axis can actually go a lot faster than that, around 900 millimeters a minute. The E. Look, it's saying 300 there. I'm thinking we can get closer to 500. And that will do. So that's the basic setup. I haven't plugged my printer into it yet. But what we will do is go to configuration <coughs> and change a few other settings. Most of these default settings are pretty good to start with and I don't recommend changing too many. The default behaviour for this is to, when something goes wrong on the firmware side of the printer, is to disconnect from the printer. Sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good, but we'll leave it at the default configuration for now. Okay, so this is remembered from somewhere else, my configuration. Okay. Temperatures. Alright, so this is going back to default. Extruder, I run closer to 205 and 65 on the bed. I found that 65 with a glass based bed you don't need to use anything additional to stick the filament down. Terminal filters we're not going to change anything because they work. Scripts, if you need your printer to do something different uh, when you before you start a print or after you've finished a print or when it's paused or cancelled, you can add those additional bits of uh, script coding in here. Okay, so these are all pretty straightforward and standard works very well. Enable support SD support allows OctoPi to see what's on the SD card that's plugged into the printer itself. So for uh, purposes of this video, anything that's on the SD card plugged into the printer will be classified as the SD and anything that's on the SD card in the Raspberry Pi will be considered the hard drive or local. We do run a webcam on mine. Uh, it, well, it's not so much a webcam as a Raspberry Pi camera and by default OctoPi does pick them up. Access control is turned on and we've got our one user which we set up during the initial setup. G-code visualization now 40 uh, 20 megabytes is actually a fairly large file but I also do some much bigger ones on this printer being a, a 500 by 500 by 500 volume so I'm setting that to 40. It can negatively impact your print if you open the G-code viewer while you're printing. Okay, application keys and API I'm going to leave for now. Uh, these commands, these are the ones that are issued to the Linux operating system on the Raspberry Pi for a restart or a reboot or a complete shutdown. You can modify these 
but unless you're very familiar with Linux, I wouldn't. Folders, this is where it stores various files associated with the print, such as the raw STL files, where the time lapses are stored and so forth. This can become handy if you install something like Dropbox uh, or one of the other um, file sharing services. You can actually share those folders to the Dropbox so you can access them easily when they finish. Appearance, I will put it, change this. CR10S5 just to make it easier to identify it when I'm looking at it with the other one running as well. So I actually run two 3D printers, each having their own uh, Raspberry Pi and OctoPrint Octo running on it. Logging will leave as is. So that'll do for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell notification and we'll see you in the next video.